Uncle Jimmy and the boys are kicking off their 2019 California rice harvest with their Case IH 9120 Harvest Combine. Whoa, heads up! Cricket incoming! Ew! Check it out, our rice has dried down and it's ready to be cut. Our Kloss Lexion 585R is there to oblige. Pops wants in on the action and fires up the John Deere 9660 CTS. All our bank out wagons are running smooth. The trailers are filling up with our freshly harvested rice. Hey, have you seen the truck driver? Today's entertainment is brought to you by Matthew's 2019 rice crop, just harvested and freshly milled. Visit ricefarmingtv.com to purchase. Link in description. Yes, the 2019 California rice harvest is a go, and it's all coming up in this episode of Rice Farming TV. And oh yeah, my buddy Tom Knowles comes out, is attacked by a mosquito, and gets some great drone shots for this intro. In the previous episode of Rice Farming TV, after I showed you several tractor videos from lettuce harvest in the Salinas Valley to tomato harvest in the Sacramento Valley, I teased that our rice harvest was about to begin. And begun it has. Check out our Kloss Lexion 585R with a 21-foot honeybee header cutting rice. Like most of you know, we grow Cal Rose and are now harvesting medium grain rice. This here is referred to as paddy rice. It's still in the field. Once it's been cut and delivered to the dryers, it can still be referred to as paddy rice or rough rice because it still has the hole intact. It hasn't gone through any milling. The only processing that has been done was back in the field, removing the rice kernels from the plant. The hole on rough rice is a hard protective shell covering the rice kernel. When the hole is removed, you basically have brown rice. The bran, the next layer under the hole, is still intact. The bran is where most of the vitamins and minerals and oils are found. That's why brown rice is more healthy. Remove the bran and you have white rice. So what you see here is, again, our 585R harvesting Cal Rose medium grain rice, and it will be the mill's decision on how they'll process it and what end consumer product they'll turn it into. Now, let's just enjoy the sounds of harvest for a bit. Today was an overcast day of cutting, but fortunately we did not have to stop progress on account of rainfall. We got in a full day of harvesting and were rewarded with a beautiful sunset under the cloud cover. the next day. Stop. Go. Hello. Today, Pops fires up the John Deere 9660 CTS, which we originally considered as a backup in case of breakdowns and emergencies. Well, we have a lot of ripe rice ahead of us, so being extra productive can't hurt. With the deer and the Claw 750 and 585R machines, we can easily cut 80 acres a day in standing rice. We finish the field, park, and unload the rice so that we can preserve true yields between fields. We want the combines, bank outs, and trailers empty 
before starting a new field. A lot of people ask why we use self-propelled grain carts or bank outs rather than just a pole grain cart and tractor. Well, if the field is muddy, the traditional grain carts wouldn't make it through. Yeah, a fully loaded grain cart would sink like an anchor in the mud. The bank out wagons will pull right through it. And why would the fields be muddy? Well, the field would be muddy from poorly draining the irrigation water or from early fall rains. You'll also notice that all our harvest combines have tracks just in case we find ourselves in a muddy situation. Fortunately, our fields are nice and dry. The bank out unloads the last bit of rice from the finished field and the trucks and trailers are off to the dryer to deliver the crop. We have so much ripe rice ahead of us, we cut through the night. Now when I say ripe, it has to do with the key concept of grain moisture. The rice kernel forms from a milky-like substance during the reproductive phase of the plant. You've seen that in my draining videos when I milk the rice. Let's say that kernel is at 100% moisture, it's liquid. Well, as the plant dies and the kernel matures, it begins to harden. We want to harvest the rice at around 18 to 20% moisture, meaning it's pretty hard. Too hard or too low of a moisture, you run the risk of the harvester cracking and shattering the kernels as it's processed through. Too high of a moisture, about 24% and above, the dryer will not accept it because it takes too long for them to dry the load of rice down to storage moisture, 14%, and that bottlenecks their operation. It would also be an additional cost passed down to us the farmers. So that's rice grain moisture in a rice hole. And when I say the rice is ripe, it's somewhere around 18 to 20 percent and definitely under 24 percent moisture. Now that's the internal moisture of the grain, right? Well, you can have outside moisture too, like morning dew or rainfall, literal drops of water on the rice plant that soaks the exterior of the kernel. This bit of outside moisture does not affect the quality of the rice and doesn't affect the cutting of the rice much either. It is a little more difficult for the combines to process it through, but you could do it. But we don't, we can't. We can't deliver damp rice to the dryer. Their moisture probe will pick up the outside moisture and it will give them a very high reading much higher than their threshold of acceptable rice. The rice may be ripe, but it's wet with water. And with wet rice, the same concept applies that is with unripe rice. The dryer would have to dry down that water and it would bottleneck their operation. Rice growers have a saying out here, let the sun dry the rice down, it's free. So I brought this up now since we're cutting into the night. Usually we don't do that much because the dryer stops accepting deliveries around 6.30 p.m. We can keep cutting and store the rice in the field in the trailers, but the evening mist and morning dew will set in, and that will bump the moisture of the rice up a percentage point or two when keeping it overnight. But when you're cutting at 19% in the evening, you can afford delivering at 20% in the morning when the dryer opens back up. And they cut deliveries at 6.30 p.m. so they have enough time to dry down and transfer the day's delivered rice to their storage warehouses. All us farmers around here can deliver the rice at a much faster rate than they can dry it down and move it out into their storage warehouses.
Yeah, our rice is ripe and standing for the most part. So we're cutting away at a tremendous rate with our three machines. Thus far, the 2019 rice harvest has been going very smoothly. The rice looks good and the yields are up. But then we stop. We park the combines and take a few days off. I don't mean to be dramatic. This happens every year. We cut so fast, we run into unripe, high moisture green rice. This happens simply because we can harvest faster in the fall than we can plant in the spring. So this field was planted later than the others that we already harvested. The plant is younger and the rice is simply not ripe. You all remember my planting videos. We do so much tillage work with the soil, then a couple passes of fertilizer. We need to flood the field with irrigation water and fly the seed on. In the spring, this all takes a couple weeks for a 150 acre field. Well, in the fall, we can cut a 150 acre field in two days. Links to all those tillage and seeding videos are in the description, by the way. So it's normal to stop. It's normal to park for a couple of days and allow the rice to ripen up, to allow the grain moisture to drop. Even though we're not cutting, we still do have a lot of field prep to do for the winter of those fields that have been harvested. So we have enough to do. And I'll get into all that in a future video. But for now, we can get out of the cabs, stretch our legs for the time being. We still have rice to cut, but we'll save that for another day, another episode. And now's a good opportunity to spend some time with the family. We've been cutting for a week and a half at the farm from 8 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., sun up to sun down. So it's time for a little rest. The rice is telling us to take a break. So thanks for watching this episode of Rice Farming TV. I hope you enjoyed all the harvest action and information. If you did, give me a thumbs up. And oh yeah, check out ricefarmingtv.com you'd like to try some of my freshly harvested, freshly milled rice. Kind of do it every year, a little tradition, I suppose. Anyway, have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much. And uh, in case you were wondering, Elena did my nails. Bonding. It's cold.